Well, let's consider the source that we want to use. We want to send a pulse of electromagnetic energy. Let's start by considering the shortest possible pulse of electromagnetic energy, say a Dirac, Dirac delta function, which is infinitely short in time. So it's equal to zero when time is not equal to zero, and it's equal to infinity right at t equals zero. So in time, it looks like this, right at zero. If we take the Fourier transform of a Dirac delta function, we'll know what frequencies are needed to create the Dirac delta function. Taking the Fourier transform of the Dirac delta function, we get one over two pi, integrate from minus infinity to infinity, the Dirac delta function multiplied by e to the j omega t dt, and that's just going to give us one over two pi. So if we were to plot this versus frequency, we would get just a straight line right at one over two pi. What this means is that a Dirac delta function is comprised of an infinite number of sinusoids, all at different frequencies. We need to combine sinusoids at all frequencies in order to make the sharp change in value in time for Dirac delta function, and then abruptly have it change back down to zero again. At the other extreme, if our source in time is just a pure sinusoid, Of course, this just goes on forever and ever, and it's not a pulse. But if we were to take the tra Fourier transform of this, we would get just a spike at f naught, the center frequency of our sinusoid. Well, we might imagine that we want something in between. A pure Dirac delta function cannot be reproduced in real life. But we also want a pulse and not a sinusoid that goes on forever and ever. For our scenario of interest, we probably want to have a fairly narrow pulse in time so that we can separate out individual reflections caused by different objects. But as we saw on the last slide, a narrow pulse in time requires a lot of different frequencies. It has a broad spectrum. So putting all this together, for our problem of interest, it will be easier to solve the time domain form of Maxwell's equations. Solving the time domain form of Maxwell's equations, we can directly model the pulsed source in time, and we can obtain results from a single simulation. If we were to choose instead the frequency domain form of Maxwell's equations, we would have to solve Maxwell's equations over and over again at all the different frequencies comprising our pulse in order to test the radar system. So let's start with solving Maxwell's equations in the time domain. Now we're in the time domain, and we need to decide between using the pointwise form and the integral form of Maxwell's equations. Of course, both solve the same physics and will provide us with the same answers, but one might be easier to start with than the other. Do you think we should start with the pointwise or the integral form of Maxwell's equations?